This album is something that I think any music lover, no matter which genre, could find something in. If there was any album I'd recommend on this entire list to all my subscribers as a whole, it would be this one. Ha 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 ha. Hi everyone, Nick the Knee Green Tano here. And it's time for my 10 albums of the year. I really need to decorate this room. It feels so quiet and weird in here. I feel like I cannot project my voice. This list is in a particular order. And remember that, you know, this is all 100% objective and a fact. There is no argument here. Also remember that I have not listened to every album in the world. So please stop commenting about whether or not the Doja Cat album is on this list. I didn't get around to it. With that out of the way, let's get to the list. And don't mind me as I read off of my script because I'm not gonna memorize the lines and look at the camera. It's not worth it. Let's put the album right here. That feels weird. I feel like it should be right there. Number 10 on my list is going to have to be Juno by Remy Wolf. Isabel introduced me to Remy earlier this year, and as I listened to her singles leading up to her debut album, I fell in love with how sporadic the music was. Jumping from melody to melody with interesting breaks and traditional pop song structure and a killer voice that was reinforced with a live performance that I caught in October, where Remy's voice was the main stage for a wonderful set of songs that were eventually released on this LP. The album moves and it keeps on moving with non-stop bangers from liquor store to quiet on set to buzz me in. The way Remy released so many singles leading up to the album, I think was smart in the sense that people were slowly introduced to her before getting a full project but i also think it was a letdown to get to the album and only have like five new songs to actually listen to either way for a debut album i think remy is showing boatloads of potential and there are only positive things to come from this project my favorite songs have to be quiet on set grumpy old man buzz me in and street you live on which is a wonderful closer to the album number nine on my list is going to have to be super what by Zarface. it was really unfortunate to not be super invested in mf doom's music before for his passing and so super what was my first project associated with doom where i became familiar with his style and i realized why he was so influential to the current state of hip-hop today the instrumentals represent everything i love about old hip-hop the flows stay unique and interesting through every song with colorful themes and the chemistry between esoteric and mf doom is fun to listen to through every single track the only issue i really have with this album is the variety between every song i wish the songs were a little bit more unique from track to track but at the same time i see these songs as a project in the world of zara face and in that aspect the songs fit the universe very well i'd say break in the action and this is canon now are both tracks that stood out to me a lot on this list and i could see this album aging very well over the next decade number eight on my list is going to be a very well-known record from a very well-known duo and that will have to be an evening with silk sonic bruno mars and anderson pack a couple of dudes that can do no wrong the synergy on this album between the duo, the themes of the music, and the aesthetics surrounding this LP were all really good. All three singles were awesome. The only downside to the record is that the sound is only so versatile, and it seems like after a certain amount of songs, it's hard to come up with something that sounds new and refreshing. With that being said, I still hope Silk Sonic comes back around one day with a new album. My favorite track on this album has to be Smoking Out the Window. It was iffy to me when the first single was released, but once I heard the whole album, I could not stop playing this song, and I'm still playing it today. The AMA live performance of that track may very well be the best live performance of a song I've ever heard. And I'm just continually going back and listening to it. I also really appreciate Fly As Me, Leave The Door Open, and Skate. 777, Blast Off. I mean, every song on here is awesome. In my nose, I'm so nasally. Number seven on my list is going to be a record that I expected to be much higher on my list when it was initially released. But as the year went on, more and more good music came out. So it went down to the number seven spot. And that would be Sometimes I Might Be Introvert by Little Sin. Sims, an album that cements Little Sims as a rapper that you must watch out for. She definitely deserved that with her last LP, Grey Area, an album I really love, but with Introvert, Sims shows that she doesn't only have the songwriting chops, but the chops to put together a conceptually mature album as well. Each song flows into the next with these great arrangements and interludes, and the world building behind this album is better than almost any album I listened to this year. The singles were the highlight of this album for me, with Introvert, Woman, and I Love You, I Hate You being the standouts for me. But Sandy Novation is another track that is a must listen when checking out Little Sims. Her tiny desk performance for NPR is the best one that came out this year and i think you need to check it out if you want to become more familiar with a great female rapper out there who's killing the game almost better than 
any other artist out there right now. She definitely deserves your time. Number six on this list is an album that I keep coming back to, and that is the hyper pop experience that is Fishmonger by Underscores. This album from a production standpoint is chaotic, unexpected, yet precise and meaningful. The vocals are derivative of a lot of styles from punk and pop music a decade ago, yet use them in a way that feels completely new. The bangers are banging, and the slower, more meaningful songs hit hard without feeling like they're trying too hard to be experimental. Underscores actually just recently released another record this year that I believe is supposed to be a b-side record to fishmonger called boneyard aka fearmonger and i almost almost like the songs on that album more than i like fishmonger i almost flipped them and put fearmonger in here but i do think fishmonger is a more fleshed out project with more finished songs that fit together as an entire project if we're talking about albums delmar county fair has to be my favorite track and one of my favorite tracks this year but i love bozo 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 kinko's field trip and dryland as well i'm very excited to see where underscores goes from here because i think they are one of if not the one to check out in the hyper pop genre today my eyes are darting all over the place i gotta read this freaking script number five on my list the top five top five albums of the year from nick it's an album that needs no introduction and that album would be Call Me If You Get Lost by Tyler, the creator. Tyler impresses again with an amazing album with unique production, a great concept, and hard-hitting yet very fun songs. I loved Flower Boy, I loved Igor with each project beating out the last, and I can say that once again with Call Me If You Get Lost. This may very well be my favorite Tyler project to date. I think DJ Drama does amazing work making this universe feel fun and familiar, and I think the songs fit really well as a project. What's Your Name might be my favorite track on the whole project, also one of my favorite tracks this year, but Juggernaut, Corso, Lumberjack, and Sweet are all tracks that I love very much as well. Every time I Tyler album is announced, I wonder where he could possibly go with the next sound, and he surprises me every single time. I cannot wait till he's ready to put out his next album because I'll be asking that very same question. Number four is an album that was not even on my radar, something I would be remotely interested in, and the album ended up being my most listened to album in 2021 by a long shot, and that album personally means so much to me. If you follow me on social media, you already know it, but it is Sling by Claro. An album that works for so many scenarios, whether it's sleep, driving through the mountains, or going on a night walk with a dog. That sentence sounded straight out of a high school essay I would have written six years ago. Sling by Claro is a special album for me from the vocals in Bambi, wink wink, all the way to the horns and the strings at the end of management. This album is a sonic journey. Not like Sonic Adventure the video game, like a sonic journey like sonically music. Amiibo was the song that I listened to the most this year, and I think every song has such a special feeling to it that I haven't felt with a lot of music. Clara out of any artist on this list has made the biggest jump in quality from her last album to this one, and I'm excited to see where she goes after this album later in her career. Jack Antonoff is also a huge help to this album, and I think he's a big reason why Claire was able to bring such beautiful sounds out of these songs that she wrote. Also, shout out to Bleachers, who put out a record this year. Bleachers is one of my favorite bands, or artist. I don't know. It's just Jack, but he also has other, I don't know. And Gone Now is one of my favorite albums of all time, but unfortunately I was left wanting more out of the new Bleachers record. It felt unfinished. It felt like it didn't really have a fully fleshed out concept. I just felt so, uh, I, I really wanted to like it. And unfortunately it didn't stick with me, but I still love Jack Antonoff. He's my favorite producer and I can't wait to see what he does next. Other songs besides Amoeba that I liked on this album were Bambi, Zinnius, Reaper, and basically everything. Shout out to Claro. I've got a full sweatsuit for Sling. I should have worn it for the video. I would have looked sick. Top three on my list is going to have to be an album that was even less on my radar when I first heard this artist, but he made another huge jump in quality from his last album EP to now, and wow, I would not have expected two non-hip-hop albums to be in my top four albums of the year, and that album is gonna have to be absolutely by Dijon or Dijon. I'm gonna say Dijon because that's what I'm familiar with, okay? This album has a lot of parallels to my relationship with Sling and has a deep connection to me personally after I listened to the full album so many times. Many times it was a single that I liked when I first heard it, but I wasn't super into it until the whole album came out. And then now I'm just, I'm blown away. I love that song. No album has the mixing and sound design that absolutely has right now in the game. The acoustics are so tight yet feel so organic. The way Dijon's vocals mix with the rest of the instruments feels like you're sitting at a dining table with a bunch of friends playing music together because that's basically exactly what it is. I think that's how they recorded the album. The live versions of these songs are amazing and I feel the heart in it so much. My favorite song would have to be Many Times, but I also love Big Mike's, Annie, Talk Down, The Dress, End of Credits. I mean, 
any song works, especially the way many times goes in to Annie is just like, oh, this album is something that I think any music lover, no matter which genre could find something in. If there was any album I'd recommend on this entire list to all my subscribers as a whole, it would be this one. Turn on some speakers, put in some headphones, and listen to Absolutely by Dijon. Number two on my list. It was so close to being number one, and honestly, it could easily be the number one spot, but I had to pick one, and I just decided to go with my gut. This album's from one of my favorite rappers and followed up two very, very good albums of his, and that album would be LP by JPEG Mafia. JPEG Mafia is the GOAT. I don't say that to just anybody. He is the greatest in the game the one who can do it all. This guy writes his music, he records his music, he produces it, he mixes it, he masters it, he promotes it, he performs it by himself. He literally brings out a laptop and he DJs for himself. He'll finish the song and he'll walk behind the laptop and set up the next song. If there's one person who could single-handedly do it all in the world of music, that man is JPEG Mafia and he never disappoints. He explained it best when he said in an interview with Dev Lemons that he wanted his music to be experimental but with a lot of replay value and mainstream rap appeal. And that is the perfect way to describe this album. If you want to dip your toes, your little toes into some experimental rap, you need to listen to this album. The mixing is so unique. The songs work together so well while also being super interesting and different from one another. And there's a Britney Spears cover on the album. What else? What else do you want to ask for, huh? My favorite song has to be Dirty or Hazard Duty Pay, which that song unfortunately is on the offline version that he puts out on Bandcamp because he wasn't able to clear the sample. But I'm going to include all the links below to everything so you can go listen to it. I also love the song Rebound. I love the song Tired, Nervous, and Broke. I love Ghost of Ranking Dread featuring TK Maidza, which we'll get to in a second. Every song is a banger and every song is worth listening to. LP, JPEG Mafia, please give this man your time. What a freaking great album. Before we move on to the number one album of the year for me, Nick Is Not Green, let's do some honorable mentions. First, I have to give a huge shout out to my good friend Dev Lemons for putting out some of my favorite songs this year with Guessing Games and Don't You See the Time. Dev has some rocking songs coming out soon, so go to Apple Music, go to YouTube, go to Spotify, and follow her so you know when they come out. I'm gonna include all the links in the description down below. Great music, Great artist, great content creator, highly recommend. I want to give an honorable mention to one of my new friends, Robbie from Cave Town, for his album Man's Best Friend. It's sort of an EP album situation. It's only seven songs, but it really is an amazing record that I wish I got more of this year. I first heard Cave Town when I was sleeping on a road trip and someone put on Lemon Boy. And in the middle of my sleep, I was listening to this song and I was like, oh my gosh. And I woke up 30 minutes later and was like, hey, what was that song that goes? And she was like, oh, that was Lemon Boy by Cave Town. I said, you better put that song on right now or I'm going to stop the car. and I'm going to jump out and, and find that song myself. And it, it very quickly became one of my favorite songs of all time. It means a lot to me. And so do so many of his songs. Love Cave Town. Seeing them live in April. Another honorable mention to Backwash with her album, I Lie Here Buried With My Rings and Dresses. I recently became mutuals with Backwash after hearing a lot about her over the past few months, and I finally got around to checking out her album, and it is one of the most creative and hard-hitting albums I've heard in a long time. The production on this thing is a masterpiece, and the only reason it isn't on my list is because I did not have enough time to get familiar with it before the end of the year. I'm excited to see what's coming for Backwash while also going back to the masterpieces she's been making these past few years. Honorable mention to Unlocked 1.5 by Denzel Curry and Kenny Beat after releasing my favorite album in 2020 and my favorite album of all time, Unlocked, the duo decided to release a remix album called Unlocked 1.5 featuring some amazing production, amazing features, a great aesthetic that followed up the amazing one from the first album. I love these tracks almost as much as I love Unlocked. Give the original album a listen. Give the remixed album a listen. It's short. It's sweet. It, it's awesome. Yes. I also want to give a shout out to Still Woozy's new album this year. I thought it was a great debut and many of the songs are still in my rotation today. It's made its way on the list a few times, but unfortunately I could not fit it in. I think Sven is one of the most talented producers in music right now, and I'm excited to continue to listen to this new album and to see what's next in the future. Lil Nas X had a great debut this year with uh, Montero. I thought the album was great. There were a few songs that I really liked, but in the end, it's not really my kind of music and it didn't really make its way into the rotation. But I really loved That's What I Want and so many other songs on here. I think they're such 
freaking glistening pop tracks that I think he deserves all the love he's getting. Album's great. I want to give our last honorable mention to TK Maidza for her EP release this year called Last Year Was Weird, Volume 3. After releasing two nearly perfect EPs, she came out with the third that is also nearly perfect. They're all really great. They're short. They're sweet. She's got such great vocals, such great melodies. Everything is tied together in this dream world that feels so cohesive, and I really love her music. You should check it out. Ooh, number one. Number one on my list was very tough to pick. This is an album that I hold very dear to my heart, and I know a lot of other people do if they know the group well. After the unfortunate death of one of their members, Injury Reserve went on to release an album called By the Time I Get to Phoenix. This is an experimental rap album that feels like a gut punch the whole way through, and it is my album of the year. From the start of the record, the LP will sound how heartbreak feels. The sporadic drums on Superman That, the hard-hitting bass lines of SS San Francisco, the rap verse that Wild West centers around and builds up to, and everything, every everything leading up to the heart-wrenching lead single, Knees, which is accompanied by a great music video which features a verse from the late Steppa J. Groggs, whose shadow shows up in the music video as well. Knees has to be my song of the year on my album of the year, which is tied to my album art of the year as well. By the time I get to Phoenix is an album about closure, saying goodbye, and all the shit that happens before, during, and after a tragedy. It is music that will shake you up and leave you confused, but the more you listen to it, the more you understand what's going on. I saw Injury Reserve live in October, and it may very well be the best live show I've ever seen. If any of this sounds interesting to you, please sit down in the dark, put on some headphones, and check out this album. I'll leave a link to the visualized full-length album in the description down below. I know I don't really talk about music much on this channel, but it does have a huge role in my life. And I think being able to chat about something that I'm interested in every once in a while will give you guys a good look into who I am beyond the screen that you watch me through. Anyways, if you want to watch more videos, just check out the channel I post basically every day. Check out my main channel, Nick is Not Green. I'm going to start doing a lot bigger concept things this year, a lot more things that make me feel fulfilled. Nick is not gaming. I'm playing games. And follow me on my socials. At Nick is not green. Thank you so much. Thank you for hanging out. I've been wanting to make this video for a long time. And I've, I've been, you know, thinking about these picks all year. So I'm so excited I got to share it with you all. Thank you again for hanging out with me. Have a great day. Bye bye.